Thank you, Stefan, for this extraordinary and visually stunning film. So, where shall we start? From the beginning. Yeah. How did it all start, please? Um, it started with a scriptwriter whose pet project this was, and, and he pursued it for decades. 15 years or so, yeah. And, um, yeah, and finally it came together. And I, um, he showed it to me like, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And I said, yeah, interesting, uh, but, but, but I'm not available now. And, um, so he persisted you no, or the producer? I think it was first me and I think I did counterfeiters at that time and said it's not a good time now and then he met Oliver and yeah. But it takes time, projects as you know um, um, have a long history usually. Okay, uh, I'll ask you uh, Question, when and how did the spark, the decision to make the film, and why did it? Maybe that's... A, I cannot answer for you. Yeah. <laughs> so basically the writer was an old friend of mine. I had a uh, stipend with him 20 years ago, and he is not a professional scriptwriter. Um, so Hanno, um, 20 years ago in Vienna, I, we worked together on some kind of a workshop and then 20 years later he came and said there's a very promising script I wrote and I had already talked to Stefan Rosowitzki and I always wanted to work with Stefan together. And we had this idea to make a film in an expressionistic style, so basically the package was there. But you have to answer Stefan when the spark for you was there. <laughs> when do you want to make the film? Um, I mean, A, it was, was uh, sort of the story, which, which felt fresh and, and uh, had elements you haven't seen before. And of course, uh, then the, the challenge to do something visually new. And uh, the thing is, uh, there's a, a friend of mine, colleague, uh, who made something kind of similar, uh, very complicated technically, very expensive. Uh, but actually it looked very normal, you know, and, and you said, so, so why all the fuss if you don't uh, create a new world? So this is what we learned from that, that if you uh, use this technology, uh, you have to create something people haven't seen before. You have to create a new world, a new visual experience. So, uh, it's also a pretty um, not so usual combination because Oliver, you're an editor, so you have to listen to Stefan, and but you're also a producer, so sometimes Stefan has to listen to you. So, how did uh, this type of collaboration actually work? When I started producing, I was always a harsh editor, and usually directors loved it. When I was harsh in a, as an editor, directors loved it. But as soon as I started producing, directors had the feeling like I have them in a <laughs> in a difficult position. And when we were working on this film, I think it was quite cool because I, I cannot imagine doing this film without having the possibility to react in editing. We had a lot of situations where we said... Um, Budget-wise, we have to edit like this and like this, so it was a quite a good combination. And especially, I have to say this, uh, I didn't force uh, myself to edit this film. Stefan at one point said, why don't you edit it? And I think it was the right decision, yeah. And it really was in that case, I mean, this is why I thought it would be a, a good idea, you know, that a few frames more uh, would be incredible more expensive, you know, and then you... <laughs> Uh, and and uh, it's not comprom. Oh, I mean, yes, of course, it's compromising. But as we all know, you know, directors in interviews always tend to say, "I don't make any compromise." But uh, sort of uh, that must be a parallel universe. My my job is making compromise, you know, because 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 I don't have the money. Uh, 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 the weather is not. Uh, 
the sun isn't shining uh, as I would like to have it. And so it's always compromise, compromise, compromise. And sort of in, in this particular case, making the best out of the money we had. You know, and so sometimes you say, okay, let's make that a little bit shorter because that saves so much money. And so we can make some other great things with that money we save here. And I even have to say, sometimes I think we exchange roles, right? Because mm. <laughs> there were a lot, lot of situations, usually a producer and a director bargain about shooting days. And what I did usually uh, is as a producer to say, the director comes and says, I want 30 shooting days. And then I have to come as a producer and say, no, you can only have 25. And in our uh, case, it was a, the uh, opposite uh, way around. So basically, Stefan wanted to say, this is a special technique that we are using. It has to be uh, useful. And we should shoot the film in uh, just a few days. And then Stefan insisted on 18 days. And then we said, no, 24. And Stefan said, 19. So we bargained until we find, I think, 21 days in the end. Well, Because, of course, uh, the, the, uh, the cool thing about shooting everything in the same studio is that you can start at 9 o'clock with... with Uh, night outside uh, in the woods and then at 11 uh, you can shoot daytime inside an office you know because you don't have you, you don't rely on uh, a day and night on the weather uh, you don't have company moves from one uh, location to the other because everything is happening in front of the blue screen uh, so, so please uh, could you explain this visual concept you it's you also this visual style so maybe the audience don't actually know what you yeah. did there are these extraordinary pictures and so just short explanation how you did it It's, i think uh, most of you probably know about blue screen that you you uh, you're shooting a person or whatever in front of a blue background and afterwards you can tell the computer replace the blue with another image you know like uh, the city of vienna and then it looks like uh, 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 that person is standing in front of the city of vienna that's a very old uh, movie technique i think king kong uh, was was Uh, one of the first big uh, visual effects movie that used blue screen technology. This is sort of uh, the basis. Uh, the problem is for the actors, they're always in blue. And you have to tell them, oh, by the way, now it's night. Uh, you are, uh, I don't know. Yeah, cause, but, and they don't have anything uh, uh, that, that helps them to, to, to get the feeling of this situation. But it's, I think it's not that difficult for them because it's like playing theater. When you're in theater, you're also standing uh, on, a, on, a, on a small stage and uh, you're supposed to imagine that this is Helsingör and that you are the king of Denmark. That's what, what an actor learns. Uh, your main actor is a famous actor, Muratan Muslu. So... Uh, He's not well known in Croatia, but it's a great name in German-speaking countries. So tell me why he? So why was it so important? It's a pretty, you know, we were talking about manhood in the film as the main theme and how it is treated that you really wanted to use uh, some kind of uh, alpha male for the role. So yeah, I mean that was the idea to to to. Uh, Because I felt it should be an alpha male. Uh, it's all about this, um, that this guy thinks he's being humiliated uh, because his country uh, became so small. It's, it's a little bit like, like what, what happened in, 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 in Russia. You know, uh, sort of I did a lot of, of, of interviews with Russia. They also, you know, have this national feeling of humiliation and we've been a superpower and now we're not a superpower anymore when the movie opened there before the Ukraine crisis. Mm -hmm. That was uh, quite interesting. And so I felt uh, it's got to be this, you know, strong, big alpha male because uh, he would... Um, sort of suffer from this imagined 
humiliation much more than than uh, little nerd or you know who 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 uh, Inspector oh, guy. <laughs> yes uh, who always was was more of a victim and not sort of uh, uh, the hero in his own perception uh, I would like to ask other maybe some questions from the audience don't be shy <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm interested in the decision to uh, make this movie in the sort of a German expressionistic style. Uh, mm -hmm. As as I saw it, uh, this you know the twisted buildings and everything really weren't objectively twisted, but maybe the mind of the hero was was twisted. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I got that metaphor, but I'm interested in the decision itself. Um, I think uh, it's 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 not only quoting that style and say let's do it uh, like they did it uh, in Germany in the twenties, but but it's sort of the same thinking that they had, for example, in the uh, famous uh, expressionistic movie uh, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Um, uh, our hero is a guy who comes back to a world uh, which he doesn't understand. And for him, it doesn't feel stable. It, it feels everything feels uh, distorted and out of proportion and wrong. And uh, we just try to visualize that. And I think uh, the expressionists had... Uh, the same goal in a way with their aesthetics and I think this was um, after the first world war uh, this was really sort of a culture shock uh, for um, 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 in Europe you know and 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 um, like in Austria you know it, it became this small country uh, the the emperor was gone aristocracy was was abolished uh, there were all these new um, 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 trends in art, in literature, whatever. It was really sort of a new world and people had major problems to adapt to that. And uh, so I think this is the source for this expressionistic style and that's also the source uh, for our choices uh, uh, concerning uh, the visuals of the movie. Please, more questions? Okay, now I'm going to ask Oliver because you are you are actually editor, producer, and style. So tell us uh, about it. This third artistic contribution. How did it? Um, when I when I read the script, I had the idea of this expressionistic style, and this was a um, way the film happened, basically, that I approached Stefan and said, how would it be to in reinvent expressionism with a new approach and not shoot it like an old-school historical film? And, um, yeah, basically, before I started producing, I worked as an editor. So in this case, at one point, Stefan asked me to edit the film. I think it was quite a homogenic thing. Yeah. If I think about the film, I could not imagine how it would have worked without having the three positions at yes. once. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. It works but, but I think, I mean, it was sort of, of uh, Oliver developed that with, with our digital designer. You know, this is actually like a collage technique. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, Oleg, the digital, digital advisor, he made pictures of, of buildings, of parts of buildings in Vienna, but also abroad, uh, uh, pictures, historical pictures of, of uh, buildings that don't exist anymore. And then, like in a collage, he combined it to new buildings, new streets, uh, new... Uh, urban situations and and sort of uh, that basic idea to do it like that uh, that was yeah. Oliver and yeah. Oleg or on the other hand, I have to say that we had quite an experienced team. We had Bene, who was Benedict Neuenfels, who was quite a great 
DOP we had when we Counter Fighters started, DOP also yeah. yeah when we started the film of course I, I always loved and I wished to work with Stefan but for everyone it was quite a new field we had to gather a lot of experience during shooting so for everyone it was quite an unknown sphere which mm. we encountered I just want to mention that the, the film won uh, best production design on Austrian film awards that it went also won best production design on Diagonale as the it's a tough competition you know there are also great films there so uh, it won actually the visual uh, all the visual parts yeah. I have to uh, to say it was quite interesting because most of the production designers and we had two production designers quite experienced production designers and Oleg which Stefan already mentioned who did all the digital design and the production designers were always skeptical because they said in the way we work as production designers, our colleague will not honor what we did. And uh, they always said it will never get nominated, it will never get any award in Austria. It was nice to see that it won the two important awards. Yeah. If I may ask, what was the budget? Approximately, or is it a secret? I, I'm open with it. No, no, I'm. Uh, I, I don't understand when producers are yeah. hiding figures because you can find it in the internet. So we started with 5.9 million, and it be, became a little bit more expensive due to the pandemic. So we ended up with 6.5. Yeah. Questions? No questions. Hmm. I can explain one I'm, I'm asking myself. Um, so, so what you're usually doing with the with the blue uh, blue screen technique is that first uh, you make the backgrounds, yeah, photo of the backgrounds, and then uh, you have the uh, um, actor sort of step into that frame. Uh, and then you can check whether it worked. And we started like that as well, but because uh, as our backgrounds were completely distorted, yeah. this didn't work, you know, because when the actor made a step to the left, he suddenly became a dwarf. When he <laughs> made a step to the right, he became a giant. So uh, we had to do it the other way around, which is quite unusual that first uh, we shot uh, the uh, scenes in the blue box and Afterwards, we had to, to uh, build that distorted world around the movements uh, of the characters, of the actors. Okay, it's a tough, it's, tough uh, job. Quite, uh, just, just to elaborate, because I was doing this panel this morning, yeah. and usually what you do until you uh, shoot a film is make all the decisions until the shooting. And then you make some decisions in the editing. But in this case, we had one year of decisions afterwards, what color has a uh, building in the background, what was the perspective. So we had really a, creating a film one year after shooting the film, which was quite unique, I think. Yeah. So uh, there is a question. So how many days did the uh, creation of the background take a year more or less yeah uh, sort of the process was uh, first i as a director made um, uh, a storyboard the whole movie every shot uh, a little like a comic yeah so everybody knew at about uh, what's going on and this was also uh, crucial for for budgeting you know, cause, so cause, so cause, uh, how, they, how many artists took part in? Uh, so first it was me doing the, 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 the storyboards. You know, this is what I always see as part of uh, my directing job. You know, and then accordingly it was... Yes, and then it was mainly um, 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 Oleg. Uh, then we shot it, and then we saw, okay, where are the actors, where are they moving? And we knew from the storyboard, this happens in front of his house. And then um, Oleg could create the house, um, or could create the background uh, for that image of an actor in front of uh, a blue background. So that, that a little bit meant so just you two? No, no, no. There was one uh, art director in Vienna, Oleg, 
who was doing the layout and then the layout of Oleg, which was basically a rough Photoshop schedule, came to the VFX company to Belgium and then I think 60 people were working on it. Mm. Yeah. That's another... Okay, thanks. Okay, if there are no questions further, thank you, Mr. Ruzovitsky. Thank you, Mr. Bauman, for coming here. And thank audience. Thanks. Thanks.